Hello guys, um, I was talking to a friend in the pub last night um, who's just got into the hobby um, and he asked me to make a video on the, the way I, I keep a pond. Um, he says, I, I, I do it for beginners, a lot of you who are already in the game, you know, you know how to look after your fish, but I thought I'd just give some my opinion on how to look after the fish. Uh, these are, <coughs> sorry, these are some of my fish. Quite big, some of them. Oh, I spooked them. Right, technically, these fish, they won't be able to swim around much but technically, technically they could live in here. It's all about your filter systems, okay? Because when, when you feed your fish, or when they're eating, um, everything they eat, they produce waste. Like, like us, everything. Um, that waste that comes out of the fish is um, ammonia. Now, if you just left that in, if, it, you, if you had no filter system and you just left that in the water, you wouldn't have to fish for long. Ammonia is, is like poison. It would just kill them. So the why you have filter systems is that the water passes through the filter system. Hang on, let me show you. Right, this is my filter system. It's called a Nexus. Um, let me take the lid off and show you inside. Right, so that's inside the filter. And what happens is in the bottom of the pond, I don't know if you can see it. No, it's right down there, it's, it's, it's a bottom drain. And this is a gravity fed system. So the water go, go through the bottom drain, down the bottom there. It comes up into this filter, comes up this side, goes around here. The inside is the bit is what takes out all the the, the, the big bits of sediment it passes through that into the outer chamber now this is the me mechanical side all these are covered in bacteria okay so the ammonia that's in the water what the fish produce gets broken down by this media the bacteria living on it and it gets converted into nitrite which again is it's not as bad as ammonia but you don't want high levels in the pond so uh, there's another type of bacteria that grows on that as well which convert the nitrate sorry nitrite into nitrate and nitrate is what all plants feed on so once it's gone through the system there's a pump down there okay so that's forcing the water back into the pond and again it's creating a circuit so then the water from the pond goes straight back through the filter and goes through the cycle again yes this is a big filter um, but this is this is my third pond overall build um, technology moves on every so many years this is a good way um, I find that keeps water ammonia and nitrite free but again you're not removing any of the waste products if you just left it like that the, the fish will eventually die so what this filter system does let me show you right so I've switched the air into the middle chamber and can you see the dirt starting to come out Because I'm not feeding the fish this time of year, there's not going to be that amount of debris in the water. But the green stuff, the algae, is um, this is what feeds on the nitrate, the last stage of the 
um, ammonia cycle. So that's that's the stuff you need to remove. You can get sponge filters, uh, pressurized filters, but they they all require maintenance once a week, twice a week. Now, with the reason I've got this system is this is so much easier. I'll show you why. Because what happens is all this dirty water that's coming out underneath this church building I built, I've got a hang on a minute. Well, I don't know if you can see down there. That is a 300 gallon underground sump. Okay, so all the dirty water that I empty out of this stores down there. Um, and that's what I use around the garden. Plants love it, it's full of nitrate. Um, the grass really loves it. So we don't have to spend any money on plant food because this is all natural, it's really good. Right, so obviously when I empty the wastewater out, the, temp uh, the um, volume of the pond water drops. But what you need to consider, what I do once a week, after I've cleaned the filter out a couple of times in the week, um, I top up with fresh water, straight from the tap, but I do put it through a dechlorinator. Um, so they are getting fresh water. I don't heat my pond, um, I never have. I've kept fish for 25, 30 years, something like that. Um, I've never heated it. Um, my opinion is that the fish, I'm not worried about them. I don't want them to grow all year, all year round. That's the only reason why you would keep the water warm, so you could feed them all year round. Um, in the wild, fish, they, they don't get heated. Um, so I let mine have a hibernation period um, over the winter, and then just start it all up again in the, in the spring. The reason I cover my pond, hang on, let me show you. Obviously I've just pushed a, one of the sheets back just to do this video. Um, wind chill will really cool your water down. This pond is five foot deep. It's two and a half foot into the ground and then obviously raised. Um, the earth temperature is always a um, steady. It's never gonna get like, freezing cold like the top surface because it's two and a half feet down. Um, you're always gonna get the warmth from the earth. Well, that's, that's how I look at it anyway. So that's why my pond is still holding at seven degrees at the moment, even though we've had quite a few frosts. We've just had a storm go through. Um, but as you can see, the fish are not sitting on the bottom. They're still quite comfortable, still moving about. As I said, this is my third pond. First two, I used a liner. This one, I fiberglassed. Um, first time I'd fiberglassed. Have a look at my video, one of my videos on how to fiberglass or how, how I fiberglassed. Um, I hope this has cleared up that it's, even though my filter system's made it easier for me, um, so I don't have to clean sponges out, pressurized filters, it does, it technically cleans itself. All I have to do is top up with fresh water once a week. Um, that's something you need to consider when you have a pond. It's, it's not, a, not, it's not the fact that you can just fill a hole with water and put fish in it. You need to have a filter system. You need to remove the ammonia and nitrite, um, or the fish will die, obviously. Um, start off small, that's my advice to you. But remember that when you buy these two inch fish, um, you know, you're gonna fill your pond up so you, so you, you can see them. But remember, you've got potential of getting two foot fish, two and a half foot fish. So all them little two inch fish are gonna get really big. So we'll, fall, we'll make the mistake of getting too many fish. I think I've got too many fish in here at the moment. Hang on, let me show you the... In here, I've got two tanks full of baby fish I bought from a koi farm. Some really nice little fish. A few of them will go in the pond. Most of them I will move on. But as my filter system is, is 
it's oversized for the size of the pond. Um, it can obviously cope with a bigger amount of fish in there. So hopefully um, that answers a few little questions. Any hole filled with water, um, you just need a pump and a filter just to take the um, ammonia and nitrite out of water through the bacteria which grows, it grows by itself, there's nothing you need to do there. Once a week you need to do a water change, um, probably, probably about 10%. And after the ammonia turns to nitrite, and then the nitrite turns to nitrate, that is when you, you're more likely to get green water. It's what the algae feed on. So just the other piece of kit, you just, it would be best to get some type of, they call it a UV light, which makes the algae clump together. And then when it goes through the filter, um, the filter pick, pulls it out. So that's why we get clear water, but that, that is only our benefit. Fish would love to live in the green water. Um, they feel more safe in it, but obviously us pond keepers, you want to see your fish. And that's why we go for the clean water, clear water. If there's any questions, anyone's about to, you know, thinking about getting into the hobby, it really is a good hobby. I love this hobby. Um, and once you start, you're probably with it for life. You, you never give it up. You always keep fish of some type. Yeah, as I said, any any questions, just message me. I'm always willing to help if I can. Just hope it clears it up for you. Just give it a go. See if you enjoy it. Look back, at, I've got, I'm over 100 videos now. Look back, um, if you, if you're looking to do anything, I've, I've, I think I've covered a lot of the subject in other videos. You don't have to go to the extreme I have. You, you can just start with a liner. This is fiberglass, as I said. Um, yeah, but it's very rewarding. Anyway, cheers guys, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you very soon.